Dr. Campman, the medical examiner's office has released 22 years of death record data. Why make this public? It's for the public's good. The information represents um, 59,400 and something um, people's lives and their causes of death. Uh, we've included their age, race, sex, their cause of death, manner of death, how the injury or death occurred. Um, and it's all for the public. And I have the third quarter comparison report here, which compares the first three quarters of 2018 to the first three quarters of 2017. And it shows that the total number of cases are up. The rate of accidental deaths are up about 5%. Homicides are down by about 4%. And suicides are also down by about 2%. How significant are these changes? Well, they may not be statistically significant. So overall, we need to look at the population size, and the population size for the county is up this year compared to last year. So it makes sense that the total overall number of deaths is up. Uh, for the homicides, it's good news that the, the uh, death rate is down a little bit, but that little bit, because the number of homicides is relatively small compared to the other manners of death, it could actually only represent two or three deaths difference. So uh, overall, the, the number is pretty similar. There's been a lot reported about the impact of fentanyl. Um, what are you seeing? We are seeing more deaths due to fentanyl. So in years gone by, the deaths we saw were due to people that had prescribed fentanyl and um, put instead of one patch on every two or three days, they would put two or three patches on and get too much of the medicine and overdose like that. But in the recent years, we've seen fentanyl, um, illicit fentanyl. So people either buy what they think is cocaine and get fentanyl, or buy what they think is an oxycodone pill, and it's actually a counterfeit oxycodone pill that is made with fentanyl and they, they overdose in that way and die. So um, we are seeing um, of the deaths due to opioids, the percentage that are due to fentanyl has really increased over the last few years. And I can understand releasing this information to um, agencies, news organizations, police departments, but why make it available in a, a database for just the, the average person? It's because it's not ours. Uh, the information belongs to the people. We, we, are, we do recognize the privacy of the people that have died and their families, and for that reason we don't give anyone's name or their medical examiner's case number. We, we are trying to balance uh, the public's interest in releasing the information with the private interests of the families. So from a medical examiner's perspective, what about the data release stands out to you? Well, it's, it's that it's what I've always seen. Um, things that I've seen and observed now the public can see too. For instance, um, I think it'll be interesting for people to know that when we say um, so many deaths are due to methamphetamine, that people will be able to see how many are due to methamphetamine with other drugs, or how many people died of heroin, died of heroin with alcohol or benzodiazepine. So. Um, to me, it, it, this information gives more than just the annual reports we've been giving. Dr. Stephen Campman, thank you so much for your time. Thanks.